PlayStation Sony Computer Entertainment America presents Presence Square Soft Oh my goodness, what is even what are we even looking at today? What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Blacklight Attack. Uh, wow, it is hard to believe that I'm here, but um, man, this is this game. Let's just get right down to it. Final Fantasy VII. This is indeed, ladies and gentlemen, my favorite game of all time. A game that I have actually been apprehensive to let's play simply because I love it so much, and I would be so so uh, dismayed to do it injustice in any form. But here I am, finally ready to take my step up to the plate and let's play it. For any of you who are not regulars on my channel, who don't know how we do things around here, this is called a let's play, and it means I'm gonna be talking throughout all of this, so if you're looking through just a uh, naked run through of this game and wanna just see the game start to finish without somebody talking over it, you came to the wrong place, I will be talking a lot, believe me, it's what I do. Um, and for those of you who are mainstays of the channel but have never maybe seen Final Fantasy VII before, or maybe even any other Final Fantasy, uh, I will do my best to keep you guys up to date and informed on what's going on in the game. And, uh, you know, I'll take into consideration that a lot of people haven't played this game before. And for those of you who have played it before, I hope you'll be patient. But, um, yes, oh my god. Okay, I guess we'll just, uh, we'll just... I don't think there's really much to this opening. I don't think it really shows much except for the credits. So I guess we can just go ahead and skip this and... I mean, just to give you guys some scope on how much I absolutely adore this game. Uh, this image that you see right here, I actually have this tattooed on me. Except it's like this, the new game. Um, I'll, I'll actually put an image right there. And <laughs> that that's actually permanently on my flesh. On my on my uh, right calf. So, where is it my left? I am so forgetful. I honestly can't even remember where my tattoos are. I'm sorry, it's my left calf. Holy shit, I'm absent-minded. Uh, so, yes. Um... Let's just get it started, why not? And we have a little cutscene to watch at the opening here. It shows us the first character to be seen in the game, who is... Well, we'll get to who, who she is. Space. The final frontier. All these stars. Keep in mind, at the time this game came out, CGI cutscenes... I, I don't think this was the first game to do pre-rendered cutscenes, but it was definitely the one that, that popularized it. I've heard some people say it's the first. I honestly don't know. I don't know the facts, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was, but they sure did like to spend a lot of time hovering around these stars. <laughs> Sorry, it's just building tension. This is how you build tension. And then boom. Now, don't get too excited. Even though this is a PlayStation 1 game, they, it doesn't look this good throughout. This is, this was pre-rendered back then. <laughs> this is what a pre-rendered cutscene looked like. Anyway, so we got a flower girl in the city. In the slums, actually. You can't really tell quite yet, but... And th this, seeing this back then, was just so crazy. Actually, Loveless. You see that poster just said Loveless? They brought that back big time. They really harped on that in Crisis Core because they apparently didn't have much to go on. But And there's Midgar City. Final Fantasy VII, baby. My favorite game of all time. A lot of Final Fantasy mainstays will tell you that uh, six is the best of all time. I'm not here to dispute any. Which, which is better, which is greater than the other. But I will say that I like trains a lot, and seven has trains. <laughs> I don't know, was there a train in 6? I don't know, I haven't played 6 all the way through. I will one day, whenever I find the time. And flawlessly, we're going to transition from CGI cutscene into suddenly... Here's what was, here was another cool thing about it. Even though the character models uh, in the world, like this, we got some dudes doing kung fu up in here. It's uh, Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse, and Mr. Barrett, who will introduce ourselves to and there we are hello 
Come on, newcomer, follow me. I won't be uh, reading all of the dialogue to you guys, because um, there is quite a lot, but... Oh, I think you can actually grab potions off of the uh, dead guards. But anyway, what was really cool about this game when it came out was that even though the character models in the world look pretty bad, first off, the battle models actually look pretty good, um, if, if a little low res, and the backgrounds look really nice because the backgrounds are actually all pre-rendered as well, um, just like the cutscenes. So you're actually just a, a you know, constantly uh, refreshed model running on top of a pre-rendered background. So they were actually able to make those backgrounds look so good. And I think those backgrounds are a large reason they don't want to recreate this game because if you look in them, there's so much detail and it would take them a very long time. So let's see if I was right. Yes, you can get a potion. Can you get one off the other guy? Yes. So I guess before we start here, let's just take a look at, this is the big criticism of this game and a major reason this game doesn't age well. Look at this character model. Look, What are those arms? They're like barbells. It's just, for some reason, the arms are wider at the forearm and the hand. It, like, it starts at the forearm. If it was just, like, a big hand, I could see that. But that actually, like, starts at the forearm. Everybody looks like Popeye in this game. But anyway, also nobody has a mouth except for, like, very select uh, scenes. I don't, I don't know why. That was one thing they messed up in the PC version. And a major reason I'm not playing the PC version is because all the character models have mouths of some kind. And some of them look okay, but uh, they gave Sephiroth a blowjob face. So... With a permanent blowjob phase, I couldn't take Sephiroth seriously, so. We'll get back to who Sephiroth is later. Big says, uh, we used to be in Soldier. Not every day you find one in a group like Avalanche. Aren't, isn't Soldier the enemy? Hmm, who are we? Who is Avalanche? Who is Soldier? I was in Soldier, asshole. Actually, Jesse's a girl. Didn't catch a name. Now, I'm actually gonna stick with the main, uh, default name, so Cloud for the main character. His name is Cloud. I don't know what significance that holds, but... Um, it, it is always funny to name name your characters after yourselves or just name them funny things, but I'm just just for the sake of the story, uh, I think it's best story wise because I'm gonna re be referring to them as their name, their actual in-game name anyway. So, Cloud, eh? I'm no names, don't care. Once this job's over, Cloud is the f out of here, and here comes Big Bear. The hell y'all doing? Thought told you never to move in a group. The target is the North Mako reactor. Meet on the bridge in front of it. Some people say Mako. I say Mako. I'm sure... I, I think it's Mako based on, like, Advent Children. Ex-Soldier, huh? Don't trust you. And that's Barrett. The uh, second character that we get. So we start off with two characters. And he tells you how to run. Not a big deal. Whatever. And... Take a good look at the center. Oh, no. That's not the center of the city. That's the Mako reactor. So... We'll see it more in more detail later, but this is a city called Midgar that has, I think, seven Mako reactors around the outside of it. And then in the center is the Shinra building. Shinra is the the uh, company that runs these reactors, which generate power for the city, but they're actually much more sinister than that. Oh my god, it's a tentacle rape dog. No! I'm not ready for this. I can't be subjected to tentacle rape. I'm not even a high school girl. Not anymore. Oh no, he actually tentacled me! How dare you, sir! Cloud actually does some pretty solid damage up here in the beginning. He one-shots everything, goddamn. Cloud's got that buster sword, which you saw in the uh, in the opening cutscene. Really iconic for this game, really iconic part of this game, the buster sword. And it's kind of funny, because in the game you actually replace it, like, right away. And then actually, uh, who's that, Wedge, I think? Wedge is gonna guard the exit. Biggs, Jesse, and Wedge, I don't know. You don't really have to remember them, they're pretty minor characters. And as we get further into the game, like right now, battling isn't really a big inconvenience. Um, enemy sighted! Yeah, well I saw you first, so... It's not really a big inconvenience because it takes really quick and... You know, it's kind of an action-y sequence anyway, but as we start to get on to like the later... Um, where we're traveling across the map and we're gonna run into... Uh, enemies every two seconds and especially when I'm grinding I will be cutting those battles out so you guys don't have to worry too much about that but luckily this isn't like Final Fantasy 8 where it's super super grindy because in Final Fantasy 8 you could basically be as powerful as you were willing as long as you were willing to put in the time you could be as powerful as you wanted at pretty much any point in the game and I'm always a sucker for that so I would spend a million times drawing spells from enemies anyway Barrett wants to know if this is the first time in reactor hell no nah. he did work for Shinra Planet's full of Mako energy, and people use it every day. Every day I Mako in, 
but it's the lifeblood of the planet, goddammit. And Shinra keeps sucking it out. Not here for Alexa. Well, some people say it's Shinra, not Shinra, but, you know, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, in later, in later translations, and you can even see it in some of the, uh, background art, it's actually Shin-Ra, so it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of supposed to be separated a little bit more, but they just contracted it. There were, there were some translation issues with this game, and actually the character Eris was supposed to be translated as Arif. It's just that I don't think that the TH sound really exists in the Japanese language, so the, it, the most, the closest they can get is the S sound. I'm not totally sure if that's true, I don't speak Japanese, but that's just what I've heard. So, uh, it got incorrectly translated as Eris, and then was later referred to as Aerith in every other, with a TH, in every other, uh, iteration in the, or every other entry in the series. There's Big Brown Bear. Little by little, reactors will drain out all the life, and that'll be that. And so, already we've gotten a couple of, um, of, uh, small details that are kind of leading up to really, uh, you know, they're hinting at something much bigger going on, but basically the reactors are powering the city but they're sucking out the lifeblood of the planet to do so using uh, a resource called Mako Energy which uh, Barrett claims is the life uh, the lifeblood of the planet. Uh, Shinra is the company that's running it and on top of that they have robo guards and basically an army at their disposal. Um, Cloud is here helping Avalanche who is a terrorist group. He used to be part of Soldier, the elite fighting force of Shinra and uh, doesn't really care about the fact that they're destroying the planet. This is basically like an eco-terrorist group, if you think about it. They're way more justified and badass than real eco-terrorists, who are usually douchebags who, like, attack innocent people. <laughs> um, but, you know, like, scientists who haven't done anything. I don't know if that actually happens all that often in real life, but... Um, basically, they're fighting to preserve the planet. And Cloud doesn't really care about any, any of that. He just wants his money. He wants to get paid and to get on the move, because Cloud's all about that paper, and absolutely nothing else. You know, except for that poon. Cloud's all about that poon, too. Anyway, I never noticed that uh, Jesse just, like, runs straight through the door there. She doesn't even open it. After you miss... Or is Jesse supposed to be a dude? If Jesse's spelled like that with an I, it, it's a girl. Yeah, it's definitely a girl. I was, old, I was always under the impression that it was a girl, but I, it was only just now that I thought about, you know, Jesse can be a guy's name too, baby! Anyway, we're descending into the Mako Reactor. Oh, it's so just... Oh, God. It's so menacing. Apparently there was an enemy just waiting for me down at the bottom there. Oh, these guys. These guys are weird. And, I mean, these are clearly humanoid, but... They have this weird subhuman stance and these weird masks and skin tight costumes and I mean it is an anime but they got these claws on. <laughs> I'm saying it's an anime. Are you an anime, sir? I mean it's a it's a Japanese game so you know there's going to be some freakishly skin tight suits but still something's something's not quite human about these guys. So you kind of wonder about about Shinra, what kind of dudes they have in their employ. If you know what I'm saying, and this is all the kind of stuff that I didn't really even think about when I was a kid. I started, I picked this game up when I was like nine. And I think a lot of the, the subtleties were lost on me, but, you know, that didn't last all that long because I replay this game like about every two years or so. The last time I replayed this, I, it was, it was about a year ago, but I'll count, considering it took me half the time, I think that's okay because I only played through about half the game. Well, it's not really true. It was towards the end, but I got stuck on the optional bosses that are really hard. We're going to be going after them, by the way. People who have played um, Final Fantasy VII before, you know about Ruby and Emerald Weapon. We will be going for Ruby and Emerald Weapon. And God, are they hard, but we'll get them eventually. Um, let's not worry about that. We're still a long ways off from that. This is going to be a really, really long Let's Play. And we found a Restore Materia, hooray! And I don't think, yeah, we can't even use Materia yet, because I don't know why, for some reason it makes you wait for the tutorial before you can actually equip Materia. Ain't gonna be nothing more than a hunk of junk. I'll set the bomb. Okay, and he wants me to set it. Uh-oh! High-pitched screaming noises. Watch out, this isn't just a reactor! Oh my god, my voice isn't off, I just already know what all the lines are in this game. What's wrong? Huh? He says, what's wrong? Let's move it. So we just got some weird sort of like telepathic message that this isn't just a reactor. Uh-oh. They had 
bomb alarms right, or something. Heads up, here they come, and first boss fight. And unfortunately, it's not the boss fight music, which is Final Fantasy VII seriously has some of the best boss fight music in in the in the biz seriously, like of all time. Um, oh, luckily Cloud already has some magic on him. He already has some materia. Um, we'll get into what materia is later. I don't know if we'll have time in this episode. I'm not sure how long it'll be. I'm gonna do these in half hour episodes. I was kind of thinking just because this game is so long about doing hour long episodes, but that's a lot to ask you guys to sit through an hour's worth of, of me playing a video game. So, you know, it would be great for those of you who have a lot of free time and, you know, or like, you know, spend a lot of time doing homework and listen to these in the background or what have you. But for those of you who, you know, watch, you know, at work or on your coffee break, Half an hour is already a pretty long time, so we're going to stick with half an hour. And uh, I'll try to upload this basically on any day that I don't have something else to upload. So, you know, we had that whole Don't Starve that I started. I was kind of hoping to finish that Don't Starve playthrough before I started this, but, you know, whatever. I didn't want to keep you guys waiting for this too long, and I'm just, I'm surviving in Don't Starve way longer than I thought I would. <laughs> so, uh, you know, not really a big deal. Oh, we got a limit break. So the limit break bar is like these are your super moves, and they're they're specific to each character. Um, and I think it's gonna raise its tail in a second here. Ah, crap! I just attacked. If you attack while the tail's raised, it'll counter attack you. So, Barrett, be careful. Attack while its tail's up. It's gonna counter attack with its laser. That always confused me when I was a kid. It was like because it tells you to attack when the tail's up. But yeah, so. Cloud's first limit break isn't very impressive. It's just a just a single target heavy damage. Um, it's doing a lot of damage though. And on the plus side, uh, the limit meter is raised when you take damage. So the fact that I just took a shitload of damage means that Barrett's already got his limit break. But we're not going to do anything right now um, because it's tails up. So anyway, um, yeah, limit limit builds up as you take damage and then. You can use it. It replaces your attack function, so you you unfortunately can't auto attack, um, not auto attack, but regular physical attack. If you have a limit break, which kind of sucks for some characters, take like Vincent for example. Later on, we'll get a character named Vincent, who uh, his limit break is he transforms into a monster and he becomes more powerful, but you lose control of him, which is pretty detrimental when you when you need to strategize big time. So if you want to like you know use his physical attack but you have a limit break then you kind of got to like do I want to lose control of Vincent or what so um but yeah anyway that don't starve you know that that was on you guys voted for this um well maybe not all of you but let's get the hell out of here i left uh, i left this up to a poll 10 minutes of detonation oh shit that's this is like way more time than you actually need to get out of here but it is cool that they just give you that little sense of urgency by putting the timer up there and I accidentally ran back um I left this up to a poll. I give you guys a few options of games that I would play that I love um, to see what you guys wanted me to play the most. Uh, I did it via Facebook poll, and uh, we'll back attack. Yeah, right, motherfucker. If you, yeah, if, you know, I, I'm not even gonna tell you guys what I just did because I'm trying to hold like three conversations in my own head right now. Um, so I left it up to a poll. You guys said Final Fantasy was the one that you wanted to see the most. Final Fantasy VII was the one that got voted in the absolute most, and that's awesome because I absolutely adore this game. Second runner-up was Shadow of the Colossus, which after this I may let's play. It's going to be a long time from now, but... Um, and on that poll was Don't Starve, so... Every, when I started playing Don't Starve anyway, everybody was like, Oh, you're just ignoring the poll? What's your problem? Why would you ask our opinions and then just do whatever you want anyway? And that's not the, that's not the case at all. Um, it was actually that Don't Starve had absolutely no chance of winning... But when I said I would let's play Don't Starve, I meant I would I would play a couple of lives. And, you know, lives can last a long time if you're doing well in Don't Starve, but generally speaking, you don't spend that long in, in one life. Um, so I figured I'd just play one life, get it out of the way, while voting was still open. And unfortunately, like I said, I ended up living a lot longer than I normally, than I normally do in that game, because I'm terrible at that game. Um, so it's still going, but on the plus side... I kind of need more stuff to upload anyway, because I've been uploading Smite recently, and I, I think I'm just done playing Smite. I, I cannot play MOBAs. I have way too much video game e-rage to play MOBAs, and MOBAs are just so, so enraging. I'm not even going to bother healing up, because these guys do like 5 damage each, and I have like 300 health, on, like 350 health on each character. And, you know, I could probably move uh, Barrett to the back rank. This is like a, uh, a long time function of Final Fantasy games where characters have um, 
you can either be in the in the front rank or the back rank. And if you're in the back, you deal less damage um, with melee weapons, but you take less damage. And then if you're in the front, you deal more damage, but take more damage. But if you have a, a long-range weapon, like Barrett does, because Barrett has a gun, um, you can uh, just put him in the back like that, and then he deals the same amount of damage, but takes less in exchange. I don't know why the game by default has him in the front rank. It might be because later on he gets a couple of uh, melee weapons, but you may have noticed that uh, Barrett's got a gun arm. Yo, what up, Jesse? Let me touch that ass. Oh, her leg got stuck. No, I was just helping her. I swear to God. And then she jumps over me. You're welcome. Anyway. I'm sorry I touched your booty, Jesse. Come back. Come back. Don't leave me. I miss you. Where you going? Go out with me. Like, Cloud doesn't have enough fucking <laughs> romantic interests in this game. We gotta throw Jesse on top. Well, don't get too attached to Jesse, Cloud. Yeah, it's all I'll say for now. Um, yeah, Cloud's got his Buster Sword, Barrett's got his gun arm, but Barrett later on can get some melee weapons instead of a gun on his arm. Still attached to his arm, but it's like, I think one of them is like a chainsaw, one of them's like a giant pair of scissors, or like a can opener. One of them looks like a can opener. I don't remember if that's the atomic scissors or not. I forget. But, I don't know, I yeah, I think, I think that's the atomic scissors. One of them is called like the cannonballer or like or something like that and it's literally just like a big ass iron ball on his hand like god damn dude that's fucked up he's gonna beat a dude to death with the giant bowling ball attached to your forearm anyway barrett seems uh pretty gruff and like you know kind of a generic like badass burly bruiser character but i actually love him he's he's one of my favorite characters in this game then again, there's not a single character that I don't love. Out of all the playable characters, there's not a single one that I don't love to some extent. Even Yuffie, who's super, super unpopular. <laughs> Yuffie, I actually really like. And uh, we'll kind of get... She's supposed to be comedic relief, so I don't know why people get super angry about her all the time. Talk to Jesse, and she'll open the doors. Talk to Jesse. I don't know. Talk to Biggs. There you go. Biggs, Jesse. Now, Biggs and Wedge are actually almost always characters in Final Fantasy games. Um... But Wedge is kind of just like thrown in there, or no, Biggs, Biggs and Wedge are usually, Jesse was kind of thrown in there as the, uh, as sort of the third wheel. I don't, I don't know what's up with her, but, well, Biggs and Wedge are usually male characters anyway, and I guess they just wanted more female representation in Avalanche, which is cool. So I guess they just threw Jesse in as a, as a new character. Is Jesse a recurring character? Any, anybody who's a big Final Fantasy fan let me know if they if jesse's a recurring character now every final fantasy is a different story completely different characters different world everything um except with a few notable exceptions but um they often have characters jesse you gotta save your ass again <laughs> cloud's like oh it's gonna blow let me touch your butt cheeks again riding back to the pre-rendered cutscenes oh yeah that's right terrorism hold on one two three four five six seven eight it's eight i knew it was either seven or eight um what was I just saying? Oh, so they're not the same characters, but they're recurring in that they always have the same name and share a few key traits. But the other big one is Sid. There's always a Sid in every Final Fantasy game that has something to do with an airship. Um, anyway, Big says that should keep the planet going a little bit longer. Which is like, yeah, yeah. So, man, these graphics, dude. This is what we had back then. <laughs> I feel so old playing this game, but it's it's so good. Honestly, um, as long as you don't mind a bit of grind, I think this game still uh, aged really well. What really, what really speaks volumes to me is the story and the um, and the quality of the dialogue. I think aged really well, and it's something that we don't really have in games that much anymore. Every game nowadays is voice acted, and um, that's kind of hey, give me my money. Yeah, we're just escaping to the hideout right now, and. Um, the thing is, I think I think we really lost some quality when everything became voice acted because the voice acting is just simply not as good as like TV or movies right now. And uh, there we go, more of that loveless shit. They really visited that in uh, Crisis Core really hard. Excuse me. Oh, it's the flower girl from the cutscene. How you doing, baby? Uh, what happened? You better get out of here or nothing. Hey, listen. Um, uh, hey, listen. Um, I don't see any uh, all these flowers. I don't see too many flowers around here. It's a city. Do you like them? They're only a gill. A gill is absolutely nothing in this. I will buy one. Thank you. 
Not that this flower actually does anything for you. Can I eat it? Is it a healing potion? You better run. You just jip me real bad. Uh, how? Where did I come from? Over here? Probably over there. Anyway. Was I in the middle of not finishing a thought? I don't remember. Everybody's running around because there was a big-ass explosion. Just, what the hell's going on? I don't know, you tell me. Ooh, a potion. Yeah, you gotta look for that shiny shiz. That's all the items is. Yes, um... This game really didn't... Oh, oh my god, I've been caught. Oh, I was talking about the dialogue and stuff. And, like, as much as I love some of the games... And, like, games are getting better. More and more we're getting better and better games. Like, take a look at Bioshock Infinite, for example. Like, really good voice acting, in my opinion. And really quality dialogue. Um... But there, I mean, some games, a lot of games, I should say, I think are really hurting due to voice acting. And like the Final Fantasy series in particular is really bad. I was talking to a friend. Now me, I haven't played Final Fantasy 13, but I've heard a lot of not so good things. Some people liked it. A lot of, a lot of people didn't. And a friend of mine told me that one of her biggest complaints um, when playing the game was one of the characters had an extremely annoying voice. And... That's the kind of things you, you run into is like, I mean, I, I played like Final Fantasy X was, was the first Final Fantasy that was that was all voice acted. And I hated that game mostly because of the characters. And I think that if the characters had only had written dialogue instead of spoken dialogue, I think I would have liked them a lot more because a lot of them were so lame. Like the voice acting was just... So actually some of the voice actors were pretty cool, but most of them were pretty bad. Arn was pretty badass. I have to say. But I hated Titus, I hated Yuna, I hated... Oh, Riku wasn't too bad. Um, I didn't like Lulu so much, I didn't like Waka. Although, I, somebody told me Waka is voiced by Bender, is that true? I don't know. And it, I don't know, as much as I... Then again, I don't think it was really Waka's voice that made me hate him, I think it was just his character in general. The reason I'm fighting all these guys right now is just for XP, because why not? Although, in the interest of Let's Playing, I probably shouldn't... Oh no, I can't escape! You sons of bitches! No! I want to get out of here. So, you can actually run from battles. It takes a minute, but you can, um, if you hold down L1 and R1, you start running the opposite way. And, uh, eventually you'll get away. But, one of the main advantages to that, and something that they fixed in later games, is if you get back attacked, you have a random chance of entering a battle with the enemies at your back. Um, you can, uh, you can just tap R1 and L1 and they'll go to run away and then turn back around so you're not being back attacked anymore. Your ranks are still messed up because anybody who's in front and anybody who's in back will be reversed. But anyway, oh my god, Shinra soldiers everywhere. I've killed so many and they just keep coming. That's as far as I go. I don't have time to be messing around with you guys. Grab them. Fuck that. Too legit. Out of here. So it's kind of weird. Sometimes in some cutscenes you have like the full size normal people pre-rendered models and then other times you have the chibi models like we just saw it's kind of goofy um but anyway cloud hops on a moving train to escape like a total badass and everybody's escaping thinking that i'm deed no way he was killed he's too awesome for that cloud he's dead i know it what the hell Do you think Cloud's gonna fight to the end? What? I thought they thought I was dead. Do I look like a mind reader? Fuck that. If y'all weren't such screw-ups. <laughs> Barrett's just like relentlessly mean to these guys. These are like his best friends and he just like constantly verbally abuses them. Tries to ask about the money, he gets a fist pound in response. Ah. I have no idea who was supposed to be saying ah. Knock knock, bitch. Who the fuck is it but me? Yo, sweet flip. Everybody missed me so much. Looks like I'm a little late. Damn right you're late. <laughs> Come waltzing in here making a big scene. <laughs> they actually made Barrett talk like really ghetto. I actually really like it. Like in, in his dialogue. It's just what I always do. She even, even has the she. Don't give a damn about nobody but yourself. I love, this is kind of how Cloud starts off, is really cheesy and kind of full of himself. Um, but one of the things I like about this game is that you'll see that change as it goes through. So keep keep a close eye on Cloud and how he reacts to certain situations as this game continues. But 
Anyway, everybody's gonna verbally fillet me because I'm fucking amazing. We'll do even better next time. And you, Jesse? <laughs> Be careful, I'll shut this. Thank you. I'm gonna touch your butt cheeks again. Sexual harassment isn't cool. If it makes you guys feel any better, I would totally touch the butt of Barrett as well. Jesse just so happened to be in the position to get her butt touched more than he did. Butt touching will commence on Barrett, though. Just give me some time. I'm working on it. Alley oop. Aliz oip. Now, we're at 30 minutes. I would normally cut it off right here, but I'm looking for a save point. It'll be easier later on um, when we get out of Midgar, because uh, there will be more save points in the world map you can save on anywhere. But uh, the first good while of this game, the first uh, like hour or two, I honestly don't know how long it takes, but the first first while of this game is actually pretty linear. And then later, after you get out of Midgar, um, you get a more open world and uh, you get to explore a lot more, which is cool. So, so already, I don't know how long we're supposed to have been running away, but somebody's already heard that the reactor blew up. Um, we're kind of celebrating in our victory. We blew up a reactor and got away. And... Uh, there's a hobo sleeping on the train. This is my house. So make yourselves at home. Oh, you my man. I guess we'll make this a little bit longer than usual since... Do you think... Don't you think I got a bright future ahead of me? I wouldn't hold my breath, Fatso. It's pretty harsh, Cloud. You really think I won't? Hell no. Nah. Anyway. Um, uh, yeah. I'm bothering the other passengers. I'm about to bother you with a sword, you asshole. That's one thing you gotta consider. People are just running around with giant-ass swords. It doesn't show up on the uh, on the model, but bombs and monitors, you know. We just got away with an act of terrorism. We'll make this a little bit longer since it's the first episode. Why not? I'm trying to say so many things. <laughs> okay, it's about to start. It's a movie, in-flight movie. It's a flying train, a complete model of the city of Midgar, about a one to ten thousand scale. My goodness. The main support structure holds a, a plate in the center, and there are other support structures built in each section. So. Basically, we were in the northern section. The city is built like a big disc. Um, and like I said, the reactors provide them. The reactors on the outside provide them each each sector with electricity. So even though we are kind of helping the planet, we are also dicking over a lot of people and just left them without power. So it's not so more morally uh, black and white. But anyway, each town used to have a name, but no one in Midgar remembers them. I always thought that was an interesting little tidbit. Now they're just numbered sectors. It's sectors 1 through 8. So, um, it, the city's a big circle. It's got the 8 reactors on the outside, and it's split up into 8 sections. Um, and uh, there's the slums underneath in the ring, kind of between the center and the outside ring. Um, and then the uh, there's a plate where the rich people live that was built above the slums. So they're basically just closed in and just sandwiched in between... The uh, the ground where they live and the uh, and the plate above, which created a whole second layer of the city, um, which is just a really shitty situation if you think about it, because these people can't even see the sky. This this is a city. The slums in the city are, are eternal night. So, speak of the devil. So she's just explaining that there's a security ID check um, that is indicated by this red light flashing, and we have some fake IDs that she created for us so that we're not caught. And will you stop pushing me out? I want to go in that car. This one sucks. Anyway. You can see the surface now. So you don't have no day or night. Just like I was saying. No day or night. If that plate weren't there, we could see the sky. So I guess it doesn't really have... It's not like eternal night so much as it is like... Just constant... Uh, like fluorescent fake lights. Neon lights. You just fool surprises. I bet he gets to walk into the next car train. Because that fucking pizza, the people underneath are suffering. <laughs> he refers to the plate above as, as a pizza. And the city below is full of polluted air. That's actually, um... What is the name? The name of the track is called... One of the songs on the OST is... Um... I think it's called Underneath the Rotting Pizza. I think it might be this song, actually. But it's just... It's a really depressing song. This is a pretty depressing song. Listen to the music in this game, by the way. I like this train. It can't run anywhere except where its rails take it. And Barrett actually likes that quote. He'll he'll be saying his interpretations of that quote more and more as the, as it goes on. But anyway, yeah, I think I think this is 
Is this underneath the rotting pizza? It might be. It might actually. This might be the uh, train graveyard track. I forget. I don't. I never owned the uh, the OST, so I don't really know. We should be coming to a save point sometime soon here, and we can end the episode when we do. And everybody's getting off the train. What's up, Biggs and Wedge and Jesse? Here comes Jesse. Better run. Hopefully with uh, the compression on YouTube, this uh, pixelation will look a little bit better. Because on my end, it's really, uh, really pixelated since it's uh, blown up resolution. Get over here. Get over here. The mission was a success, but don't get lazy. Don't y'all be scared of that, that explosion. Next one's going to be bigger. God damn. We're about to attack another one. Be back at the hideout. So we're about to blow up another goddamn reactor sometime soon. And that will be next episode, I believe. But is there a save point up here? Yes, perfect. Okay, so this guy is taking a piss in the corner. Hey! Hey now, oops. What on earth are you doing? Just butt out. Come to see it too? Your penis? Oh, the bombing. Right, if this pillar should come down, everyone in the slums is dust. There's no point worrying about that. It's huge, ain't it? Oh, you actually get to look up at this, yeah. So this is a big-ass pillar um, that's supporting the plate that I just mentioned above. So we're in the Sector 7 slums, and there's the Sector 7, you know, nice town <laughs> above that. And uh, it, the, uh, the plate is held aloft solely by this pillar. So, looks like a pretty important structure. Hmm, wonder what could come of that. And I apparently, this is a strange and wonderful place, but it's my place, you can come here when you want. Bye, bro. Did you just piss on my shoes? Over here now, you're not the boss of me. How about I save and then not even talk to you for another week? How's that sound? Because I'm going to do that. Anyway, guys, that'll be it for episode one of Final Fantasy VII. Let me know um, what you think of the series so far. I know it's just the first episode, but, you know, also let me know what you're, uh, what you're kind of expecting from a run like this. Uh, I've never actually Let's Played a, uh, a legit JRPG before, so we'll see how it is. You know, very dialogue heavy. It's, uh, stuff that I'm not really used to. No voice acting, so we'll see how that goes in the future. Um, you know, show your support for the series by leaving a like if you did indeed enjoy it. Stick around for more episodes, and when I'm adding more episodes, I will be adding it to a playlist. Hope you guys will join me next time. Goodbye.